<laughs> Welcome to Zero to 60. I'm your host, Matt McChesney on the Believe Network. Uh, we are excited about today's show. Happy Wednesday to everybody out there. Uh, we were rolling this morning on Coach JB's show. Uh, Big Schmitty will be joining us here soon today on this show. Where we're going to dive in to defensive line play and talk about defensive linemen in the draft and all-time greats and pass rushing and just have a little bit of fun here today with Big Schmidt. Uh, Darnell Smith will be joining us here on Zero to 60. But like always, uh, the show is brought to you by our good friends at Bet Online, And Bet Online is your number one source for all your summer sports. Uh, from Major League Baseball to the NBA and the NHL playoffs, they're both in full swing. So make sure that you do all of your betting, especially for tonight playing games. The Eastern Conference goes this evening. Uh, and then, of course, you'll have a, more games on, on Friday night as well or on Thursday and Friday night as well for the playing games. And then the, the playoffs start on Saturday with the Nuggets hosting the Lakers. So make sure you do all of your betting with Bet Online. They have the most up-to-date stats and news and, you know, whether or not Anthony Davis soft ass is going to play or not. You'll know all that with BetOnline.com. So go on there. Bet online. It's where the game starts. Use the promo code Believe. That's B L E A V, and you'll get a fifty percent uh, bonus on your first deposit. Uh, they are they are the title sponsor here for Zero to Sixty, and we really uh, appreciate all that they do. So check it out again. Bet online where the game starts, and it's where we start today uh, on Zero to Sixty. So before Big Schmitty gets in and on the on on the the stream here, um, the Nuggets and the uh lakers kick it off here or tip it off i should say on saturday i wanted the lakers i'm glad that they got the lakers uh we'll get dempsey or hastings or vic or somebody on the show here uh as we move forward to figure out you know some of the little basketball insiders some of the old school altitude folks i was actually just at the gas station and walked into somebody that noticed my sweatshirt and was like hey i miss you on the radio got to tell them about the new podcast well that's pretty cool um so we'll see how that goes. Remember, we're on YouTube and Twitch, and we're rolling every day. Super chats and subs are open, and we appreciate any and all contributions there. Uh, if you go on Twitch, make sure you you check out Factor, uh, the the Factor uh, endorsement, and the the Factor. Um, there you go. Thank you, Bree. The Factor uh, endorsement is right there. You get 50% off your first box and your wellness shots for life using the link. Factor SE 48328. Uh, and that'll get you hooked up here. We really appreciate everybody getting in on the Factor uh, sponsorship as well. They do a great job of supporting us on Twitch. So thank you for all that they do. Um, <clears throat> okay, so let's get into this. Uh, see, you know, defensive linemen always late and shit. But Regardless, we'll dive into this. This morning, uh, Big Schmitty and I, or Big Schmitty, this morning, uh, JB and I were talking about this to a point, and I'll just talk about this until Schmitty gets on. Um, you know, the the whole, like, see you calling out Coach JB and saying this isn't last chance you and stuff, and the conversations we had today, they were pretty, uh, how do I say, they were salty to say the least. So there's definitely some bad blood between the big guy uh, and see you up there. Maybe not bad blood, but there's some definite, uh, there, there definitely needs to be a phone call maybe. <laughs> and I'm kind of in the middle of it and, and that's fine. You know, that that's where I find myself a lot of the time in, in the gray area. So we'll see how all that falls out, but to call out coach just pretty much by name and saying, this isn't last chance you, I kind of disagree. I kind of think that college football has become just one big Juco stream with no payoff. Like, when you go on the transfer portal, if you were to say the transfer portal is now junior college, you go on the transfer portal, you, at least you get to play at junior college and show that you can and get recruited again. And the transfer portal, now you just sit there until somebody wants to give you an opportunity. And I don't know how that's going to roll. So, I mean, we'll see how all that goes. But look, a lot of people are chiming in here uh, <clears throat> right off the bat. Uh, Bree, who's producing the show behind the scenes. Nuggets in four, question mark. I like the sweep. I think that they will. Um, uh, from Mateo Rodriguez, let's go Nuggets. Bring on AD, soft pussy ass. Yeah, he is about as soft as they get. There's no fucking, no debate about that. Um, you know, I think the Nuggets will will beat the Lakers in five minimum. Uh, don't be surprised if LA comes out and, and really puts everything they have into the first game like they did last year, still lost. 
Uh, but if they don't get up, if they don't split the, you know, the the games in Denver, then, you know, shit, man, you hope to get one in L.A. before they have to come back to Denver. I don't know how that's going to work out, just to say the least. I think Denver is by far a better team, way deeper uh, than the Lakers are, but definitely a better team. I mean, let's just be real about what we're talking about here. So, um I, I think that, you know, when you're looking at the, the playoffs here for the National Basketball Association, it's, it's very simple. It's take care of business in the first round if you're the Nugs. Oklahoma City is going to pull whoever wins the Pelicans and the, the Kings game. Uh, they could lose that series, although Oklahoma City has been very good this year. The playoffs are a different beast, to say the least. So we'll see how all that goes. Schmidt is going to join us here very shortly. He's wrapping up Coach JB's show. They're done at 10 o'clock right when we start. From East Coast Gridiron, people act like when players enter the transfer portal that they are totally quitting on that or in that sort of general. Sometimes a change of scenery is good. Yeah, that's true, but sometimes kids are just soft as shit and don't don't really finish or go through adversity very well either. And we're going to talk about that. And right now, uh, my man Big Schmitty joining us here on the show. What's up, brother? Welcome to the show. How are you? I am so good. I'm so blessed. Wait, I'm so what? in good spirits, man. Sorry for being late. You know how JB gets oh, down, man. Just had to close that show out to cut some out. He's over there cutting some guy out named AJ Maverick. And side note, man, before we continue, I heard you're trying to take my spot. Yep, there we go. I knew it. I knew it. Good. I'm glad you heard that. Yeah, I hear everything, man. I just know that. <laughs> You we go, you got to kill me for that spot, man. Yeah, I love it. And that see that folks, this is what I'm talking about. So the, the competition is what we love, and you're you're always going for that next spot, right? Schmidt the Schmidt knows this. I know this, Coach JB knows this. Let's talk about the transfer portal here because we didn't really get to talk about this this morning between the two of us. Yep. Coach was pretty pissed off about it to say the least. Before we get into the defensive linemen and the draft and all-time greats and try and talk a little bit of shop there. It's hard to talk uh, the trenches with Coach JB. He just don't get it because he's yeah. a pencil neck. Um, <laughs> what do you think about McLean going to the portal and everything in the the Twitter squares, which I didn't know was a thing, but obviously that did happen this morning. You, did you hear the the exchange between him and the other gentleman on the the Twitter squares thing? The initial the the, the Twitter spaces, yeah, yeah. yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. If, you can, if you can find that, folks, go listen to it. We don't have it here, but I just heard it on JB's show. It's pretty revealing. I mean, what's your what's your thoughts on all the transfer portal shit and McLean and everything that's going on? Yeah, man, I just think it's out of control, man. It's just it's to a point now where it's like players will leave for any reason now. It's it's it's, it's bigger than just money. I mean, they're they're leaving for because a coach yelled at them. They're leaving because they just they miss home. They're not getting the reps they want, or they're not. Like, it's just whatever reason that comes to their mind. They're leave they're leaving, and I think. You know, once you give these these guys that opportunity, they're going to take it. A lot of these guys, I mean, they're 18, they're 19, they're 20. They're, they're learning how to be young men. And right now we're giving them an out. Like you said, when you and I played, there was no out. You had to figure it out. You had to bust your ass and earn that spot. You had to fight through that adversity. You had to, if you were a third on a depth chart, well, hey, you got to figure out a way to get to number two. And you, that was just part of the process. But nowadays, man, these guys would just leave for any reason. I think it comes down to these guys don't truly love the game anymore. They love everything uh, around it. And, and talking specifically about McClain here, I mean, listen, I don't know, the, I don't know him personally. So like, it, it's always hard to speak on someone's character if you don't know him personally. But based upon what I've seen and what I from last season, the fact that he was barely playing and Coach Prime coming out and, and just kind of keeping it real and saying why he wasn't playing not having his business in the classroom, et cetera. And now you're seeing that he's transferring and then watching that or listening to that Twitter spaces. He comes off as one of those cats who's just too cool for school, who, who's a guy who he's a five-star guy. So he just assumes that, you know, he's just the best and he doesn't have to work. He doesn't have to go to class and get the grade. He doesn't have to listen to coach. He thinks he's better than everybody, including prime. You know, so th those egos get so big, man, that it, like, it's thing, beyond bro. belief. <laughs> That's the thing. It's like you're a corner. You're a five star. You got all the gifts from God and you don't want to stay like there's got to be some a problem with the with the kid. Yeah, because Travis Hunter seems to be flourishing under this this tutelage. Cooper June, or senior seems to be flourishing under this tutelage. Stoudemire seems to be flourishing under this tutelage. Trevor Woods, Bentley, 
guys on defense seems to be flourishing, especially like the DBs in the secondary. That that's a good unit. You know, yeah. Travis Hunter is one of the best in the business. McLean could be that kind of guy. You, you said it earlier on JB show, but why isn't McLean glued to Travis Hunter's ass? Number one, and then number two, like who is going to be a better teacher than? Deion Sanders and the staff he's put together to help you develop McLean. Like, who's in McLean's ear telling him, like, you know, I think that you could probably get a better, uh, a better foundation for being a professional corner from this guy rather than Coach Prime. I mean, what? <laughs> It doesn't make sense. And, and that's the biggest point, the fact that he plays the corner position. It's not like he's a fucking, you know, he's in the trenches or he's a he's linebacker. Like, you are a DB. This is the best corner of all time right here. And then you got another teammate who's on the path of greatness and potentially being a Heisman Trophy winner who's, what, a year a year older than you, I believe so, yeah. who was also a five-star guy. It's like, bro, the book is right here. It's like, just open it up and read it. <laughs> and he doesn't want to do that. So, I mean... I think, man, these four and five star guys, man, they just want to get their asses kissed. And he's gonna go yeah, somewhere man. where coaches kill and kiss his ass, and yeah. he might play well. I'm not wishing the guy bad anything, but I don't think he's gonna maximize his talent. Based upon no, it's where not gonna get any easier going anywhere else. Everyone's right. gonna look at him and go, "Why'd you leave Colorado? You couldn't get along with Coach Prime. How are you gonna get along with just our DB coach, who's just some guy, or maybe played for five years and doesn't have the same kind of clout?" or the same kind of backing Coach Prime has. If you won't take Coach Prime's tutelage and take his word as, like, as God's word, essentially, when you right. play corner, like, why would you listen to anybody else? Uh, Landon Curtis, imagine leaving after a school or after a coach pisses you off. The coaches that I thought I hated uh, at points ended up being lifelong friends and mentors. Mm, That's what these kids don't understand. Great, great, great uh uh, chime in there, Landon. We appreciate you, bro. And that's the truth. My coach in college was the same guy for five years, Coach Chris Wilson, who's now in the in the UFL as a defensive coordinator. He I he hated my ass, and I hated him ninety percent of the time. But God damn it, without that man, that there's no way I'm sitting in this chair. There's no way I have my pension. There's no way like anything good happens because yeah. he challenged me all the time. I didn't have the I didn't have it was either quit or or do the work. That was it. Now there's an avenue to what we said on the show earlier. If you want to quit, it's never been easier to do it and let and have people pat you on the back for it and tell you that you're right than it is now. And that is the biggest, like that is the 100% biggest recipe for disaster, in my opinion, with young football players, bro. It's a fucking problem. Yeah, it, it truly is, man. Like it, it, it's crazy because like I'm trying to put myself in their shoes. Like if I was playing today, what would I would I be transferring this much? I, I really I I can't see myself doing it. Like the only way I can see myself even thinking about leaving is let's say I went to Ball State for two years, two three years, whatever, and I became like all conference and I kind of like was out playing the conference, so to speak, and I had right. an opportunity to go Big Ten or SEC, you know, play with more competition. On top of getting the bag, maybe I make that one move to do that, and then I'm done. Yeah, as a grad transfer, like the fifth kid went from Western Michigan to Florida State, balled the fuck out, he'll go in the first round maybe. Yeah. Like Drake Nugent went from Stanford, and I'm not saying Stanford's not a power five, but Stanford and Michigan are. Yeah, it's different. <laughs> like I can't even, it's, the separation is insane. Right. Grad transferred, went to Michigan, balled the fuck out, won a net. That's totally different. I agree with you on that. But just running to run. Man, it's gotten really, really bad. From Ryan Nelson here joining the chat. Uh -huh. Big Mac, college football separates the kids that like and love the game. Big difference from high school. Also, Coach Prime is going to hold anyone that comes to that program accountable until they have to prove it. I agree. We talk about it in this in, at Six Year Football Academy constantly. Do you like football? Do you need football? Or do you just or do you need football or do you just kind of like football? You know, mm -hmm. if you need it, you'll do anything for it. It's like air. If you like it, that's an emotion. You might not like it tomorrow, and then all of a sudden, you know, what's that going to lead to? So, and that goes in every facet of the life. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, no, I I, I agree one thousand percent. Like you said, I mean, I was a guy, I was a kid who 
who loved football but also needed football because of my environment and my situation. And it was my tool uh, uh, to, to get out of my situation and to better my life. I always say to people who ask me like about my life and I, when I go on podcasts, I say football literally changed my life. Like every, every even when I look at where I'm at today, every little like step around my journey, I feel like football had a little – touch to it whether it's my mindset and just intangibles yeah. whether it's through the networking i had to get to fox whether it was the the to get my first job out of college like during my whole interview I, like, my first job shout out to aegis worldwide a recruiting firm back in indianapolis i remember doing my interview process you know they'll ask you different like random questions like tell us tell us a time you have to face adversity and like every question they asked me at that it was my first job so the only experience i had was football so like every ex- every answer I had was like, well, I remember this time, man. It was fourth, it was fourth down, and I had to, you know, get this stop on the one. And they and they actually loved it, and they helped me get my job. So my, my point of bringing that up is, at each level, football has has really like shaped and and saved me. So like for me, it, it's bigger than just a game. But I just think because of the way things are today, with the money these kids are getting at a young age, with the transfer portal being wide open, and there's not being any sort of structure. Kids are there's so many distractions everywhere with social media, etc. Where I just think a lot of kids don't truly, truly love the game. And then on top of that, just being quite frankly, they don't some of them don't actually need it because you can go build your brand up on Instagram and go get a million followers and get a bag that way, even if you're not playing. Again, and not a bad thing, it. but and then don't repay it. That's the thing. At least I'm an advocate, get your money. I'm not anti-money, yeah, but don't like steal it. yeah. <laughs> Like, yeah. like we used to make fun of people, the, the free school seekers. Yeah, guys would come in and they they be they look like Tarzan, play like Jane. All of a sudden, their knee would go out and they never play again. But they get five years of free school. Yeah, like now you're getting guys going in. Like the, the look, I don't know what's going on with the Proctor kid from Alabama, but he's back in the transfer portal. That's fucking that's ridiculous. insane. That's that's Iowa committed to Iowa, decommitted, went to Alabama, played all those games. Went in the portal to go to Iowa, went back in the portal to go to Alabama, and then went back in the portal to leave Alabama two weeks later. Like, that is, like, bro, that is the epitome of, like, he's got a girlfriend that he that's, that he loves, but he does not want to show her to the rest of the world. There's, like, something wrong with her or something. Like, she's got a peg leg or, like. This motherfucker's living a double life, man. Eyes, eyes talk like a pistol or some shit. Like, something's going on, dog, and she's just bad as fuck when the lights are off. But when the lights turn on, he's like, huh? And he's like questioning his decision, right? So he don't know what to I'm do. Just, like he don't know what to do, dog's fucked up. And I, I'm just I'm looking at this, Schmidt. Like, if you're if you're jumping to at what point does the transfer portal become a negative? Like mm. there's there's folks in here that that uh let's see if I can find this. This was a really good one. There you go, right there. From Tyler mm. Riddle, my man TR. Kermione McClain be lucky to get a G5 off after that. Now, I'm, mm. I don't think that's going to happen. He's a five-star. He could blow up and be a great player if he can just learn from this shit. But, bro, at what point is the transfer portal going to be looked at by more than just us as, wow, this kid's in the transfer portal? I knew he'd be there. I don't want him. That's a red flag. Instead of, like, a, a lower-level player going into advance, when are you going to start seeing like power five players that go in early and all of a sudden it's a massive red flag and like a ding on their, Mm -hmm. on their resume? Like, why do I want to be associated with this cat? He just quit on himself and his opportunity there. Cause I don't think people look at it. Romani McClain didn't get poached. He didn't get like, he didn't get tampered with and poached like they try and do to some players. He just left. And then if you listen to that Squarespace thing, whatever the fuck it's called, all you Twitter all, space, all, Twitter space, whatever it is, that it, it's very revealing. And it's extreme. Like to me, the fact that he's like, I don't give a fuck at the beginning of it. And then at the end, he's like, man, y'all take this too personal. Like, dog, you are real fucking laid back and cool, calm and collected. Or you're on the lean or some shit like you're way too cool. For not and but you've never accomplished a goddamn thing. Like being the best in high school, I'm sorry, but that is not what you want to do, Kermani. You don't want to be the guy at 30 years old, like, man, I went to see you and I could have played for Coach Prime. It was the shit. But I decided that 
you know, I really didn't give a fuck and everybody else took it too much, too personally. And I just wanted, you know, I just wanted to go do me. He wouldn't right. let me do me. Like coach prime is the guy who's not going to let you do you. He invented doing you. Yeah. hundred percent. And Kermit, to your point, he will like, if his career doesn't turn out the way it's supposed to, he's going to, when he becomes a, a real grown ass man, you know, 40 years old, he's going to look back and regret all this shit. He will, man. Like, but, hey, so what, what would you say to this kid right now? It, say say he goes to Florida or go back to the U to play for Mario Cristobal or he goes to Florida State to 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 play for your Norvell and them boys. What would you say to him right now, dog? What what advice would you give to this young cat? Because he ain't gonna listen to us. I'm just some old head that's some washed out O line D line guy, and you're, you're you're just some fucking commentator guy. What the fuck do you know? You right. know what does Coach JB know? He's just some fucking some guy on some radio show, right? We don't know shit. Right. So. Like, let's just say he got, you got his ear for five minutes and he actually would listen to you. What would you say? I would tell him, man, I mean, remember your why. Like, because at the end of the day, man, when we all started playing this game as kids, I feel like it started because you just truly love the game. As you got a little older, depending on your situation, you might have added an additional why. It might be because, hey, like, like Matt said, I was living in a fucking trailer home. I got to get out of here. Okay, yep. cool. Keep that foundational why because that will help drive you even through your success, even through your failures. Always remember your why and keep the main thing the main thing. Don't lose sight and lose touch with the purpose that you had to start playing this game in the first place. Don't don't be a different guy when you're having, you know, success and you're the five star guy and everyone's kissing your ass and be that same guy when you, when you succeed and even when you fail. Don't switch up. So that would be that would be my thing, man. And 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 just and commit to something. So like, cool. You trap for one time. All right, bet. You want to get closer to home? Cool. I, I I feel you. Go to the U. Go to Florida State. Whatever. And stay there and compete and ball and the ball. fuck out. Yeah. Like we want and you to ball. Like, yeah. <laughs> like if you're gonna go in the transfer portal and then go on social media and you know people are gonna get on there and start listening to you, whatever you're gonna say, talk. Say yeah. something. Don't just let some some guy just ostracize you. And he was right. If you listen to the clip, he was damn right. Mm. Like, but don't allow that to happen to be like, look, I'm going back. I'm going to go to the U or I'm going to go to Florida. And I just want to be closer to my family. And I'm going to do everything I can to, to show out. And thank you to Coach Prime and see you for all they did for me. But y'all are taking this way too personal. Dog, we just want you to give a fuck. And yeah, <laughs> take it personal. You, it, people care. It More sounds like to me, Matt. It sounds like to me that he might have like just gotten in the portal without no real thought or plan, honestly. Because like to your point, why not defend yourself the entire time? People are just taking the whole time. Yes. He just stare quiet. So so maybe he doesn't have an answer because he don't know where he's going. He don't know why he left. He, he just, just pissed decided, off he just made an emotional decision. He didn't like it anymore, and he was like, "Oh fuck." I thought I was the shit, and I'm a five star, and my fucking dick's this big, and I can do whatever I want. My balls are huge. I'm the shit. I'm the first guy that's ever played corner ever. <laughs> and Coach Prime's like, if you want to jump, jump. And he was like, I'm feeling froggy, and he jumped. And now he's just in limbo, fucking floating. And you're like, oh shit! They turned off the artificial gravity, and it's like fucking <laughs> Guardians of the Galaxy. We're floating around this motherfucker. And he's just floating around with Drax and fucking. You know, the big fucking what tree motherfucker. I am Groot. Star-Lord, I, exactly. And Star-Lord's like fucking blasting motherfuckers and little fox things fucking running around, killing motherfuckers. Like, and then Cremonti's just sitting there floating. Like, oh, give a fuck. Fuck it. Y'all are taking this too personal. Wow. There, there, here's <laughs> more than 50% of the top rated players from 2022-23 class have transferred to another school or in the transfer portal now. What? 50% got Damn. Five that's, oh half. That's bad. That shit right there is bad. We were supposed to talk about D Lyman this whole time, but we already changed the fucking intro because this is more this is more uh, fun. We'll talk about the D Lyman at the end of this. But yeah. this this is pretty pertinent information that both of us being ex college players, you know, and look, both of us having the the best part of our football careers being in college. Even yeah. though I got my pension, I had to change positions in the NFL and I was on and off fucking practice squads and IR and it was not the most fun. College is really where I cut my teeth. Same for Schmidt. He didn't get the same opportunities he did in, in college that he did in the NFL. And it was probably because of what? Height? Height. And then, yeah. yeah I, 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 long enough. 
Yeah, you know, had a knee bullshit. injury too. That didn't help, so I just kind of just moved on. Yeah. But it's all bullshit. Like I, I think that those are ways for them to eliminate guys that they have to develop, and then that like coaches have to work. Actually, bringing in guys that are just look like Tarzan but don't really like it. This is the Kermani McLean thing. Yeah, I'd rather have like. Like, Coach Mathis, I don't know if he's still the DB coach at CU or not, but his son plays at Fairview, okay? okay? And that's bad for me for not knowing that, but help me out in the chat if you know. His son plays for Grand- Grandview or, or Fairview, and he's a hell of a player. I did a game last year against Valor where he just bowled, but he's only 5'8". So, like, he's the kind of kid that loves football, and he'll do anything for it, and he'll kill somebody to play, and his dad's a coach. And if you could take Mathis's part and put it in McLean's 6'3 frame, you probably have Travis motherfucking Hunter. So, like, let's be real. This should this whole circumstance should make Buffalo Country, all of everyone, Coach Prime, Shador, every, Shiloh, everybody on that team, it should make you respect and love Travis Hunter even more. Because can you imagine if Travis Hunter didn't have the mindset of he's not any good and he sucks and he needs to get better every day? Because that's the kind of shit where if you combine the I don't have anything and I'm not going to be shit mindset with I'm the best athlete on the field all the time, you get the first pick in the draft and a superstar that's going to be a unanimous first team, all Hall of Fame, everything, motherfucker. So I know that's long winded, but bro, like that is truth. 100%, 100%, man. That's a mic drop right there, man. That's mic, a drop. mic drop right there. Mic drop. Mic drop. <laughs> All right. So a couple more here as we go through this. Uh, we really appreciate everybody. Remember on YouTube and Twitch, we're rolling. Make sure you subscribe and like, pound the like button. We got, we got a lot of eyes in this morning. Uh, make sure you follow Big Schmitty on all the social platforms at Darnell underscore Smith 95. That's Darnell with two L. Don't forget the L. The hell, son, and the 9-5, that's a great number. Follow me at Sixer Academy on all the different platforms, especially TikTok. Uh, we're blowing up there. Um, all right, let's see here. All right, defensive line question. We'll kind of get off the DBs. Matt Schmitty, do you think Trayvon Sweat's draft stock would drop dramatically, uh, similar to Jalen Carter because of the DUI? Um, mm. oh, man, I don't, I don't know, bro, because – yeah, it's a bad look and you don't want to get a DUI, but if he just doesn't do it again and it's a teachable moment, will it right. will it affect him maybe two or three spots? Yeah, but if somebody wants a fucking eater in the middle and this kid is a stud. I mean, Jeez. those two Texas defensive tackles are really good players. It's one of the reasons I had so much respect for Washington's old line is after they dealt with them in the playoff game like that. Like, they didn't just go beat up on guys. They were beating up on two fucking legit you know, no, it was a three technique. So yeah. I don't think it'll really hit it, hurt him that much. I will say this, it's a red flag. It's something where you want, it might, honestly, this might be the best thing that's ever happened to the kid. Yeah, maybe a wake up call. Yeah, it puts him in the program, you know, it, it and the program's a drug testing program. It puts him in the program. He can't smoke, he can't drink. They're going to monitor him. And then you'll find out if he really loves football or not. Will he sacrifice the party and the alcohol and, you know, everything that comes with it for greatness or will that be the reason he's not going to play anymore? So this may be the best thing that's ever happened to him. Try and avoid like a Rashid Rice situation where, bro, they're suing him for 10 times his salary. Like, let's be real, everybody listening, all the players out there that act like their shit don't stink and this is going to happen forever. Rashid Rice got, he's got a million dollar salary next year, right? Yep. They sued him because of his car accident and an $1,800 Lamborghini that he's leasing. $1,800 a day. A day Damn. to drive a Lamborghini. That's fucking nuts, right? And now there's the people he hit are suing him for $10 million or $10 million bucks. That's 10 times the salary. Man, man, man. Oh, yeah. What are you do? What are we doing in the world? <laughs> this motherfucker talking about hitting rock bottom. He he went from the oh, top of the yeah. mountain, Super Bowl oh. champion, probably the number one receiver for the team last year, I would yeah, say. For sure. And you go from that to this, potentially going to jail, getting sued. Like it's crazy. But to answer the question, oh, yeah, I I don't think uh Tavondre Sweat will his dress like will drop too much because n- no one got hurt, right? If I'm not mistaken. And and, and sweat he got DUI, but well, no it, one it was uh it was a Look, I'm going to say this, and I don't really believe it, but it was a a harmless, like, he didn't get, 
He didn't have no accidents. So, right. But thank God no one got hurt, but he should not be drinking and driving. Oh, of course. In my opinion, drinking and driving is like the most unforgivable thing ever. Like, right. I am, I'm talking about whether or not the we are talking about whether or not the NFL is going to react poorly. Yeah, they probably yeah, yeah. won't. If he couldn't play, this would be the reason that he didn't get into camp. But he's a first round talent. They'll give him a slap on the wrist and hopefully he can learn something from it. Yeah, and we'll all we'll all probably forget about it. The league will act like they forget about it and they'll move on. But yeah, I think it could be a huge learning experience for him, though, if he's wired the, the right way. Because I really do believe in life that you can't really avoid um like troubles and mistakes even if even if they're self-inflicted because i think it's in human nature for us to fuck up it just oh, it yeah. is what it is Facts. and i think that you you kind of gotta fuck up in order for you to grow and it sounds so i know it sounds kind of yes. intuitive but it just part of life so Bro, that's a fact that is straight gold right there from schmitty if you look that it's like the number one thing i'd say to everybody that signs up for my program you're flat rated so you can fail and they're like what do you mm. mean and i'm like I want you to be, you're paying me once. It's so you can fail and fall all over yourself and puke and you hate the sled and you want to kill me and you leave here and you got tears in your eyes and you're questioning everything and you have to come back the next day. Mm. That's what football is. It's not, I'm going to go get in the transfer portal today because coach yelled at me. You told me you wanted to play Alabama dog. Well, I can get you there. I can pick up the phone and make a phone call and you're going to be standing there talking to Nick Saban. Well, DeBoer. Wow, wow, that's a fucking harsh reality. But uh, like, but that's my point is are, how long is football going to act like it's not about overcoming adversity and like the the ability to just keep showing up? That's all this is. Bro, how many how many times has it been? What do I do? How do I get through this fucking terrible part of my football career? Show up. Yep. Do, do every rep, go to rehab, go to class. This is the, the the basis of everything you want to be successful in college. Show up. That is literally it. If you have a place to be, show up 10 minutes early. You got a 6 a.m. lift, be there at 5.50, regardless of how you feel. You got 8 a.m. class, 7.50. You got, you got treatment at 1 o'clock, 12.50. You got practice at 4, 2.50. You got meetings at 5, 4.50 every fucking time. And I'm telling you, when I figured that out in college, I my grade point average went through the roof. I actually got my degree, and I was like, you know, it, I didn't have any more problems. Yep. Nothing ever happened again. So that, like, that would be my advice to McLean and all these other cats: is don't run from it, embrace it, dude. Don't run from the pain. Don't run from the trauma. Don't run from the I have to get better. Embrace that shit and start taking it personal. And in giving a fuck, that would be nice to see from a kid who's got literally the world by the balls. Do you think guys need to lose everything in order to really see what they could have had? I mean, because if he loses everything, there ain't no guarantee he's getting it back, dog. That's the problem. So, like, I, I would hope not. I mean, again, bump your head, cool. But lose, that's what I'm saying. It's cert certain mistakes you can't recover from. So, like, I, you don't want to make those mistakes. Um, but, yeah, I'm with you, man. Like, I think in college, man, playing, playing ball – it really helped teach, like, teaching me how to be a man. You know what I mean? Because of everything you just listed, like there was, you had, it was no excuses. I had to be here. It is what it is. If I and if I was late, it was punishment. It was repercussions. Like it was real life shit. It was grown man shit. That, I think we're losing sight of the grown man shit. The GMS grown man shit. We grown man that shit. Back. Ain't fucking men to that. And then look, yes. the the entire like we're talking about the trench today, right? Like defensive yes. linemen the Dallas Turner kid from Alabama. How do you feel about him? And look, we're, we go from grown man shit to the trench for that reason, because this is the area of the field where it doesn't matter about safety rules and shit. It's never going to change. It's right. all, it, it's grown man time in that six inches between each other's helmets. That's going to determine whose balls are bigger. A lot of the time, bro, it's straight grown man shit. What do you think about the Dallas Turner kid? I only ask because, you know, the Broncos are sitting at 12 out here in Broncos country. And, you know, mm -hmm. you working for Fox and doing all the draft coverage and everything that you do. The Front Porch Podcast is fantastic. Everybody check out what Schmitty does on a daily. What? How do you feel about the Dallas Turner kick? Could he be a good fit in Denver, you think? Yeah, I, I, really, I, really, I really think he could be, man. I think this guy, I mean, 
I think it's a pretty good draft when it comes to the trenches, but I think Dallas Turner might be be my favorite, you know, D lineman, you know, coming out coming out this year, man. The guy's a he's a he's a freak. I mean, he was an All American last year. I think he's SEC defensive player of the year, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. It's like ten sacks. You know what I'm saying? I think whoever gets him uh, is, is going to get a huge value add. And and in today's era, where obviously quarterback play is so important to me, one of the the next most important position is the guy who's hitting the quarterback. And this guy can do that and did it at a, at a, at a high level, you know, uh, at the collegiate level. And he's still kind of still a little raw too. So I think he still has a lot of development left. And I think, I think you get them, get them in Bronco land under, underneath, you know, you know, Sean Payton and, and his tutelage there. And that could really, uh, be a huge value add. Now, Denver, y'all need a, y'all need a lot, but I do a think lot, that would bro. be, that'd that be a help. Probably, <laughs> The team's in trouble, but yeah. look, adding quality players is never a bad thing. It, right. But the the quarterback is the key, as we know. But that's not what we're talking about today. We talked right. about that with Coach JB yesterday, but you know we'll we'll let him linger on the cues. Right. I will this say this though: getting a like Alabama specifically, okay, yeah. when they have guys that come out early because he's a he's only a junior, I think, or maybe even a retro sophomore. When you get a high motor guy like everybody's chiming in, he's got such a high motor. It's true, he plays really hard. Yeah, but you're that physically gifted. That's why he's coming out as early as he is because he's he's got the like the same tangibles that PS2 has, like Sertan. Yeah. That's what they're looking at. They're going, okay, he's an Alabama kid. He's young, so he doesn't have all this mileage on him. He's built. He plays hard as fuck, and he works his balls off. He understands what he's got in front of him. This is the kind of kid we want. So, like, the full circle back to, like, McLean and some of these other young cats. It's not, It doesn't matter where you play. It matters how you play. Yep. Period. Like, and, and like, the I use Alabama for the simple fact that Nick Saban could now go to – Nick Saban could go to fucking Kent State, yep. and people would follow him there because it would work. Like, he's got an established way of developing talent. So when you're young and you're spry and you've got a, a high ceiling, bro, and the, the sky's the fucking limit. But I'm telling you, when you're young and you have a high ceiling and you're a turd mentally, the, I'm, there's no basement that's deep enough for you to get buried in. Yes. Because Ooh. I'm telling you, bro, the, the, the amount of coaches that are, fe- especially in college now, the amount of coaches, and you know this, brother, that are – totally fed up with all this fucking bullshit and the transfer portal and the kids and all the parents just asking how much money they're going to get. And like, you know, just the amount of the, like the dirtiness is right on the surface. And it used to be under the covers. Like you didn't really see very much of it. Now it's right on the surface and everybody, everyone, even the walk on kids are asking how much money they're going to get from NIL. Like, <laughs> give me a fucking break. what are we talking about? Yeah, no, nah, it's absolutely insane. And, and, and like to your point, like you said, they're already fed up with the w- way the system is. So when you when you're also a, a shit bird on top of that, it's like, all right, bro, we're we're, we're not even about putting up with that. Like, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> Why would we put up with this bullshit if you're a shit bird? Right. All right, brother. A couple more here before we get out of here. Remember, super chats and subs are open on Twitter, or excuse me, on YouTube and Twitch. We appreciate everybody on both platforms uh getting involved today. Uh, that we really appreciate you. Without you, there is no show. So thank you very much. Uh, let's see here from 300 Nursky. Uh, it's one of the things that kills me about the star system. Why are we getting a worthless three star when there are so many dogs in the NFL that were three star nobodies, myself included? I was a three star nobody. Uh, like uh, we, we'll use Trey Zoon as an example here, the big tackle from AM. Yep. Went to Fossil Ridge, got hurt his senior year, was a low three star. Went to AM, everybody dogged him. We shouldn't have this kid on the team, blah, 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 blah. And after he got healthy and rehabbed, now he's started three straight years of left tackle for Texas AM. His PFF grade is through the fucking roof. He just got he just got nominated as their as their offensive captain yesterday before the spring game, which means the way that they're going to do it is one defensive captain that's a mainstay, an offensive captain a mainstay, and then they'll put two or three other guys with them every week. But those two are your leaders. So he's the offensive leader, going to be a senior, projected real high next year in the draft, low three-star from Fossil Ridge and fucking Fort Collins, but he can't play, right? No, he wanted to play at AM. It was his only goal in life. He loves the place. 
he's old school football mentality. I'm not sitting here bragging, but I did have him in the program since he was 15. There's not a wonder why the kid is successful and tough as fucking nails and, and able to overcome adversity like that. Do you think it's more important for guys to have somebody like me and six year Academy in their corner these days or less like did, did, there's a lot of coaches that think like street agents like myself are the are a bad thing. And I don't see how you can actually do this job anymore without someone like me, bro. From a developmental standpoint, from a bridge building standpoint, all that shit. What do you think about that before we get you out of here? Yeah, no, I I, I 100% believe that they need more people like you. But you, you see, I emphasize you. I think the problem is there are bad street agents that are diluting the pool and it makes it it makes the overall look of it seem like it's a negative thing. If you got have guys like yourself who's done it at every level, who who struggled, who succeeded, who played high level college ball, who played high high level NFL ball, and you're still also young enough too, where you understand today's era, like you're the good you're you're like, you're like the perfect balance of the old school but new school, understanding the players, their mindsets. You know, wanting them to get paid, but wanting them to do it in the right way. So, I, I think having the right mentor in this space is crucial. It's critical because a lot of these kids are 18 years old and they don't know what to do, and their moms definitely don't know what to do. So, they're going to listen to whatever their sons say. Like that's why I don't really blame them because it's like they're just ignorant, and I'm and I mean that in the sense like you literally just don't you don't know what you don't know. So, you need somebody who does know to educate you and guide you and put you through the process. I know when I was getting like recruited and stuff like that, like I didn't, I didn't even know none of that shit. I didn't know like, when I first started getting recruited and going on one day camps and all that stuff, it was all like brand new to me. Cause I was the first one from like my immediate family to do any of this type of shit. Right. So I needed my high school. I had, you know, certain high school coaches, thank God who would like help guide me and help, you know, introduce me to coaches and walk me through the process and, you know, apply to school. Like just all the little stuff that I, just being real, I had no idea to, to how to do by myself. So, I think having the Matt McChesney's of the world are critical, especially today. My man, Big Smitty, appreciate you so much for coming on the show today here, brother. Uh, I'll be back tomorrow with you guys, Thursday and Friday. I can't wait. We'll wrap up this week, and then uh, we got to put something on the fucking Lakers and the Nugs, bro. What you want to uh, put on? Come on, on, man. I'll let you set the bet because your team's going to get their ass whipped, and you know it. So you want to set the bet? What's up, dog? I mean, the only bet I can think of is I'll bet you the Lakers will get one game. We won't get sweat. Cause go, come on, man. You ain't gonna put you ain't gonna put me in a fucking corner. Like, you know, good and well. Push -ups, hundred push-ups. Hundred push-ups? One push-ups. Hold on. Is the bet on is it one game? No, I'm on the bugger for the series. I guess I'm doing hundred push-ups. Fuck it. I do it. <laughs> Wow, I'm You're the man, bro. I love you so much. Have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow on Coach JP Show with Big Schmitty every morning uh, on YouTube. They do a great job. I love being part of that family. Uh, keep it up, Schmidt. I'll talk to you soon, brother. Yes, sir, man. Peace. Peace. Man, one of the best in the business there right now, uh, Donald Smith. We really appreciate, appreciate him coming on the show. Thank you, my friend. Uh, any questions you guys have here, I'd love to answer them over the next five minutes before we get out of here, uh, and then we'll be calling it a day. Remember, the Super Chats and the subs are open on Twitter and uh, YouTube, or excuse me, on Twitch and YouTube. I always get those two confused. Uh, so Nick needs new shoes, and we appreciate all of you. Um, from uh, <clears throat> Robbie Rob 666 hey, all right. Uh, you guys are awesome, brother. You're the best. Appreciate you over on Twitch, uh, watching the show. Thank you for all you guys do over there on Twitch. From McCoy Sheridan, Matt, what do you think about Eli Klein, the UTEP guard tackle projected day three? I don't know anything about him personally. Um, you know, I'm not going to sit there and act like I know every guy, but I will say this, if he's a projected day three guy, um, it, you know, it's the love of the game at that point. You know, you might as well be a free agent. Um, you know, at some point, like six, seventh rounders, of course you want to get drafted, but sometimes being a priority free agent is a better fit for the simple fact that you get to pick where you go, uh, rather than just being drafted by a personnel department. Maybe the coach doesn't want you because that happens a lot in the NFL. Uh, just, just, uh, just, you know, part of it.
303 Nursky. I'm going to sub on Twitch. My man, get it done. That's what I'm talking about. Let's see here. Super chats aren't working right now. What do you mean they're not working right now? That's not cool. All right, well, we got to figure that shit out. Why aren't Super Chats working? Damn it. Okay, Chaz, one of the keys to success for CUs online this year. Consistency uh, in your starting five, but also in what you're being taught, tootled, and then applying. And then also just toughness overall. No more, no more of this like, you know, letting the quarterback and the skill players be the point of the spear when it comes to kicking somebody's ass when they need it on the field, on the practice field, whatever. That needs to be done by the men in the trench. Um, but then also just, you know, whatever whatever is working, lean on it. If the running game's working really well in a game, lean on it and build on it. If the quick, quick screen and the quick passing game's working in a game, lean on it and build on it. The ability to understand we're not losing reps, we're learning. Uh, I think Coach Lodeholt will do an unbelievable job with that group. Uh, you, you know, you got a bunch of guys going in the transfer portal, but they're all backups. Losing Savion Washington to the portal is, you know, that's that hurts. He's a hell of a player when he's healthy. But, you know, judging by what uh, you know, Syracuse is real high on his list, and they, they gave him a fucking bag, to say the least. So he's going to build off of that, and we'll see what happens there. But, you know, Hats off to Savion for all he did. He's got one more year. We'll see who uh we'll see what happens there. From Sid, the McChesney and Big Schmitty show has to be a thing. Bro, I'm with that. Uh we do a really good job. We got good rapport. That's my dude right there. But but this is also true. Right here. Check this one out. Schmitty has 11 jobs already. That's true. I have like six jobs. So it'll be the oh my god, we have another job podcast. Oh, shit. Call it the heavyweights? <laughs> That's some good shit right there. Although, for being 300 pounds plus, uh, I am a personal trainer, so keep that in mind. I'm in shape. I'm round. Um, but, you know, when you are when you have a fat personal trainer, that's good. Nice and thick. All right, folks, really appreciate all of you. Uh, you guys have a wonderful day. Um, hopefully the subs and the super chats are working and they're they're back uh, to the way it's supposed to be. So you guys can help Nikki get some shoes because, uh, damn it, his feet are growing. The, the kid's fucking 14 and he's already in size 15 shoes. Holy Lord in heaven. Good God in heaven, man. The kid is a fucking monster. So he needs shoes and I need help. Um <clears throat> <laughs> uh my man 303 nursky you you got it in brother look at that there you go subbed on twitch my man appreciate you bro you were the man so look folks we'll be back tomorrow on coach jb show at 8 a.m and then back here at 10 uh we'll be back friday at 8 a.m and 10 uh we'll have a variety of different guests coming up i'm trying to schedule as many people as i can sometimes it works most times it don't uh if you know anything about sports media that's kind of the way this works so I cannot, I cannot express my appreciation for all you folks enough. Thank you to Bree Macis for all she does behind the scenes, keeping me going in the right direction. Otherwise, I would just be rotating left and blind as fuck. So uh, we'll see how this goes. Thank you to Donald Smith for coming on the show today. Make sure you check him out at the at Coach JB show with Big Schmitty, the front porch, everything he does at Fox. Uh, thank you so much, and you guys have yourself a wonderful day. We'll be back tomorrow at 10 a.m. on 0 to 60. And, hey, thanks to Bet Online, They are the shit, and they do a great job. So 